Welcome to season finale part one, I suppose is what it actually is, because it's the Premier League season finale today in the Leeds United career mode, season two. And then tomorrow we will have the season finale, season finale, uh, with the FA Cup final and a full season roundup, etc. as usual. Uh, tomorrow, we're hopefully, we'll add some silverware to our current sole piece of silverware we've won so far, that being the championship title last season. No silverware on offer in the league this year, but there is still something up for grabs, and that is a European spot of some description in any of the three European tournaments that are available to us via a league finish. We're in seventh, that's Conference League. We're two points off fifth, that's Europa League. And we're six points, but with a game in hand of fourth, that's Champions League. Who the hell knows? We will by the end of the day. And our first game is against Liverpool. Not going to be easy, that one, is it? To be completely honest, we've got Liverpool and Chelsea in this season finale, as well as equally impressively high flying in their first season back at this level, Leicester. They're 10 points behind us. They were slightly closer, actually, but uh, three positions and 10 points behind us. We've been on a very good run of late, but there's not too much difference between ourselves and Leicester's season, to be completely honest. And uh, I imagine they'll give us a tough game. Equally tough game will come from this first one against Liverpool. They're playing Ayathabal through the middle up top at striker, which is an intriguing decision. Pedro Gonçalves on the left, Salah on the right, Thiago McAllister and Endo in the uh, midfield. The defence is tired to say the least. Now, he did just beat Liverpool in the last minute of an FA Cup semi-final at Wembley, so we know we have the capability to beat this team, especially now that we're fully fit and they are not. That L in their most recent five games was us in the FA Cup. And, well, they've not won in three. So let's make that four, shall we? Continually saying thank you to you guys for your support in the comments section. Today, we're saying thank you to Gunner. We're also saying thank you to Adam Krinsky as well. And the third name up there is Dazash. Thank you all for your support on the save. Do make sure you drop the video a like if you're enjoying the save and continue to subscribe to the channel and follow me on uh, the streaming sites be that twitch or the youtube live channel that we have with uh, chesnoid live all links are in the description down below starting lineups looking stronger and stronger as time goes by and hopefully our league position will do too We've got many a player in the early 80s now rather than late 70s and those that were in the mid 70s are now in the late 70s there's still a couple of areas where we certainly could look to improve next season and we certainly will look to improve next season with some higher rated first team acquisitions. Lovely ball by Thiago to Mikel after bow. And McAllister makes it 1-0 Liverpool. They're looking for payback for the FA Cup semi-final defeat. And if they play like that, they might just get it too. Ah, oh, okay. It's quite a way then. Salah makes it too. Liverpool play the ball across. It was just having a conversation with someone in chat. And uh, in the process... Liverpool have extended their advantage. Lovely. Well, um, I think the Champions League hunt is probably going to be over, isn't it? But you're probably quite glad of that, if I'm honest. I know what you guys are like. Don't like me to overachieve in the first year at the Premier League level. And certainly looks like we're not going to massively overachieve by getting top four. Upa Meccano on the run of his life. Finding Ayathabal who rather impressively finds the top corner. Upacano drifted past a couple of players and has then absolutely smashed it into the back of the net. That was particularly impressive, wasn't it? Annoyingly, really well done. That finish is top quality. 3-0 Liverpool. Fifth is going to be the best that we can aim for now, you would imagine. But our Europa League spot would still be fantastic via a league finish. And with the FA Cup final, we know that it's not the be-all and end-all that we finish in a European spot in the league. We won't go to a post-match interview there. I'd rather just get home and get away from everything. Up next for us was Nottingham Forest, away from home. We can go and play that one. We are seventh now, and that was our game in hand, I believe. So that sucks. No, we've still got, still got a game in hand on Spurs. They drew their match day 35. So the gap is currently seven, but would cut to four should we win our game in hand. But we are not looking good goal difference-wise, are we now, with that 3-0 defeat, which sucks. 
It's going to be fifth at best, but fifth is still doable if everything goes our way. Nottingham Forest away from home then. Four straight draws for them. 18th in the division. That means relegation zone with only four games to go. Pajal, Adley and Alanga. Brian Dominguez and Sangare. I mean, it's, it's not an amazing side. You can understand why they are where they are. And given the quality in our team, you can understand why we are where we are. But we have ambitions to be higher than where we are. So do they. They don't want to get bloody relegated, do they? But... We're going to make a couple of changes for this one to hopefully still get a decent amount of performance from the side whilst giving some other players some more first-team football. Gruev can start. Uh, we'll throw Drama in as well. And we'll also give Ben Davies a game, actually. Why the hell not? Come on, then. Game on. Time to go and play Forest at Forest. We have, apparently, the best defensive team in the division with only 38 goals conceded in 34 games. Certainly a strong defensive unit has ensured our good season. Although, it is the defence that is the lowest rated aspect of our eleven. So I am perhaps surprised that we've been as uh, solid as we have been defensively. But maybe that is certainly significantly helped by having an 83 rated Melier in goal. Rather than someone that is 78-79 like the rest of the defence. Van Evijk is 81 at right back. So he's certainly got some extra quality too. But it is the defensive line that's going to get the main work, you would imagine, in the summer transfer window on top of bolstering out the rest of the squad in terms of some extra depth in those forward areas. We do have youngsters that we could call upon, but I still don't think they're quite good enough to be able to do the job we'd need them to in all competitions next season. We'll just have to play it by ear and see what the squad looks like when we get to the summer transfer window. Jack Clark on a breakaway here that needs support. And Cody Drama is here to offer that support. Cody in a good spot. And Bamford is in the middle. And Patrick Bamford gets there and heads wide. Drama nicely forward to Jack Clark. Bamford will go back to him. Look to burst past Harry Toffolo. Which we've done very well indeed. Get to the byline. Cut back. Deliver the ball. Bamford. Bamford still. Blocked at source unfortunately. We found it very difficult to break down this Forest back line. And I thought Somerville was offside, but he isn't. Praises the heavens. And finally, we have the breakthrough. It is 1-0 Leeds United. I need to have a look at the replay of that. Could have sworn he was offside when that ball was played through. As well, one back by Jack Clark. No, the defender on the far side, the right back, plays him on. Lovely first time finish. The breakthrough is finally made. We've had to wait a long time for that. It's been a pretty dud game of football so far, but in the 50th minute... We do finally take the advantage. Trying to commit the defender. Look at the run of the right back. Oof. Mm. Morgan. Yellow card. No surprises. Morgan Gibbs White might be a player we could consider signing at some point. Especially if Forrest get relegated. He could be pretty damn good as a backup in that cam area. Or just in general for utilisation with squad depth. That's a lovely ball out to drama. The cross is not as great. But it will be a corner. And we'll try again. From the set piece. Alanga now going off for Forrest. We we'll have a couple of players we could look into potentially snapping up Nottingham Forest. Not sure who else is going down this season. Well, Middlesbrough certainly are. We know that much for sure. But I don't know as they've got anyone that I'd be interested in. Joe Roden has not covered himself in glory there though. That is not a good header. Home fans still very much behind their team as you can hear. Geraldo Becker has come on now for Nottingham Forest. His pace will certainly be difficult to deal with. But whether there is enough time left in the game for them to utilise it. I'm not sure. Becker, that's a lovely run. He's got the legs. And now some support. I've got the ball, though. Bamford. Use Wagner. And Nicola Pepe. And drive towards the box. Come on, then, Nicola. Lot to do still from this position. But he'll do it. Leads to Forest nil. We've sealed it in front of those travelling fans. That will be three points for us. The fight for fifth continues. Dominguez to Pajau. It's about to ask if maybe Forest might score a consolation goal. Then we might just have our answer as we win the ball back. If anything, might be us to grab another goal. Bamford's in. And he's... N ah... Not beating the goal kick, the uh, defender. That was actually quite a... Either it was a poor step over or the defender just read it. Well and truly knew exactly what I was going to do. We do get the victory though. 
all three points assured. We don't have the game against Chelsea next, I don't believe. I think it might be the extra game in between against Leicester before time, Chelsea. Just a few questions. Or does the Chelsea game come before Leicester and then we've got two played games at the end of the episode? I can never remember when the months are this busy. Thanks for speaking. Quite how the fixture list falls. It is Chelsea at home next. And we are into sixth. West Ham have dropped points. We're into a Europa League position and level on points with Arsenal. Goal difference alone is the reason why we are where we are. But we have a 12th placed resurgent, to some extent, Chelsea as our next fixture. Forrester basically down now with that defeat. Six points from safety and only six points available left for them. Crucially for Middlesbrough fans, though, you'll notice they are on 12 points now. So they have beaten Derby's record low point scoring tally. But that's effectively the three that are going to go down. Wolves survive and they'll be very happy about that. And they also might stand a chance of winning the FA Cup in tomorrow's episode. But I'm going to do my everything to ensure that they don't. We'll sim the one against Chelsea. But the standings look... Not standings. Their lineup looks as follows. I knew I needed to go to the second tile. Just wasn't the, quite on the right menu. Sanchez, Chilwell, Koch, Badiashile, James, Marlon, Enzo, Goretzka, Mudrik, Nkunku and Nico Jackson. Disarcy injured for them. Madueke off the bench will obviously make an impact for sure. Outside of that, there's not really much depth there for Chelsea, is there? Spend a billion quid and that's as good as you get. More than, because they've got Koch and Goretzka and Marlin in there too. And Gaia. They're not great, are they? You can understand why they're 12th. And Badoo. As we look to get underway here at Ellen Road against Chelsea, we very nearly start with the first goal of the game inside three minutes. Robert Sanchez drawn into a save. Daniel Marlin. He's got the pace to get away. He pops up everywhere, Daniel Marlin. It's going to fall to Jackson, and he's buried. It's a brilliant finish. It's taken until the fourth minute of the second half to find a way through for Chelsea, but they have been the main side that look like scoring in this game. They get pretty fortuitous that it falls to Jackson how it does, but it's, it's well tucked away, in all honesty. Melier might well have been able to do slightly better with it, but as you can see, it was struck right into the corner. He's at full stretch, Melier. Not a chance, really, I suppose. That's 1-0 Chelsea. Only Madueke off the bench for Chelsea. Into David Washington. David can have a go from range, maybe. He's got the overlapping run arriving of Reese James. He's going to use Marlon in the channel instead. Here is now Reese James into a very good position. And stood up to the back post. And there is the second to seal it. No Madueke wins the header at the back stick. It's Chelsea 2, Leeds United 0. And we take yet another backward step for our hopes and dreams of the highest possible league finish today. With Leicester and, I want to say Bournemouth, both away from home still to come. There are definitely still six potential points available for us this season. But even if we get all six of those available points, I'm not sure how high we might well finish in the league, to be completely honest. We'll do everything we can to maximise our potential League finish. I mean, we're still only two points behind West Ham here. It's still very much doable. We're seven points, however, behind Spurs in the Champions League position with only six points available to us. So top four is gone. The title is certainly won by Manchester City already as well. But fifth is doable still. Keep the faith. Leicester pushed us all the way last season in the Championship. And this season, they had a good old go at challenging us for the highest finishing side of those that got promoted. However, you can see from their form, they have fallen off towards the end of the season. They've dropped to 10th in the table. Uh, Cannon scored a couple of times for them at, most recently at the weekend, I think. Or I might be thinking of maybe him being on loan somewhere else for this season in real life and scoring a couple of goals. It doesn't look like that scary a side, does it, to be completely honest? So you can kind of understand why they finished where they are in the table. If anything, actually, that side shouldn't really have finished as well as it did. Ours is definitely significantly better. So we should certainly be anticipating getting a result here. We could play in the away strip, but it's probably be better to play in the fruit salad kit, isn't it? So we'll do exactly that. Uh, I, I could change some players around. I'd be leaning more towards continuing 
with the most of the first team players involved, so we'll do that and then we'll play the game. Oh, it's poor. It's really poor from Leicester. Cochla has Jack Clark in a good position. It's Gelhart that's found. He'll squeeze it to Van Evijk, who drives on, stands up the cross, and Trevor Chaloba nonchalantly chests it away. Strafetz, I don't know anything about him. It's definitely not a name I've come across before in career mode. Or certainly not one that stands out in the memory anyway. That's poor from Chowdhury, and Leicester are cutting themselves apart again. Oh, dearie me, Joel. That is atrocious, mate. Get to it first. Lovely. Decent touch. Laid off. Gelhart's going. And he's in. And he brings it down brilliantly. Gelhart! Good save by Danny Ward. It's all leads in the opening 15 minutes here. Leicester cannot cope with our offensive play. The only thing they can so far cope with is stopping the ball going in the back of the net. Oh, and it's a poor ball looking for Piru there. It could have been another opportunity to make the breakthrough. Surely it's only a matter of time before we get a goal against Leicester. They've lost three of their last four. They have not been in good form. They're not playing very well in this one either. Doesn't look like it's going to get any better for them. Challenge by Pascal Strauch to de depossess Tom Cannon. I was getting my cannons mixed up earlier. It was Andy Cannon that I was thinking of that scored a couple of goals for Wrexham at the weekend. Tom Cannon is the one that's involved here. Wagner will tuck this back. Peru has a cannon of a left foot, but we haven't been able to properly utilise it yet. And 20 minutes in, it's still nil-nil here. But Leicester can't even get out their own half, let alone stand a chance of creating a goal of their own. They've been so poor in this one so far. It's actually been quite embarrassing on their half, considering how strong they were last year and how far they pushed us in the chase for the Championship League title. Some of it will nod that down. And Archie Gray rifles it wide. Clark to Cochlear. And out wide. Wagner. Somerville into the gap. Oh, it's, it's great. Crescencio Somerville's really good. But nobody has good finishing today. He's the next person to play the ball wide of the target when the goal is just there waiting to be tucked away. How many chances do we need against Leicester City? I can't believe we're not one nil up in this game already. Desperately need the points. And the goal difference. But at the minute, we are so close to losing. Deary me. Spread that out to Jack Clark. Oh, such a heavy touch. Now who can't get out of their own half? Coquelin. Pff, I get lucky. The ball was there to be won and he missed it and caught the man. He's already on a yellow card. We might have ended up losing Coquelin there. I might end up having to make a substitution to ensure that we don't end up losing Cockerland today. Van Evite, Jack Clark is with me. Peru's making the run. Oh, it's a lovely ball to him. And Joel Peru, and Joel Peru, and leads one less than ill. Lucky that it fell back to me. Nothing lucky about the second effort, top quality finish. I tried to just take him... I didn't want him to actually make that sideways turn. I wanted it just to come across onto his left foot. Regardless, we scored anyway, so I'm not going to complain too much. That left foot's a wand most of the time. And this time it worked. You've not got long left, Leicester City. You really don't have much left at all. Two and a half minutes, in fact. And he's still pissing about with it at the back. Annoyingly, West Ham winning 4-1 against Wolves. Which means that they're going to maintain the two-point gap above us in the league. It just popped up. It would be behind my camera for you guys. But I could see it. And it depressed me. West Ham will remain two points clear of us in fifth what Arsenal are doing on this particular match day I don't know whether we stay seventh or whether we move into sixth if Arsenal are victorious then we certainly will stay seventh because our goal difference is worse than everyone else around us we will go to the post-match interview Arsenal won 4-1 as well yikes okay so seventh we stay for now heading into the final round of fixtures Sorry, can we just it is doable to get ourselves into the top five still we just now need to go and win again against Bournemouth and hope that Leicester, Thank not Leicester, you. hope that Arsenal and West Ham drop points. Final match day, 19th placed Bournemouth. They are down and very much out of the Premier League. A couple of good players. Enezunal always plays well against us, but we are favourites and should be favourites and are deservedly favourites for this fixture. Back to a 
full strength side for this one. We'll play in the away kit. I know it's dark kit versus dark kit, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Oh, we just, we live in hope. Please, lads. Let's get the win and let's see Arsenal and West Ham both drop points. Let's get fifth. Favourite. Ryan Fredericks bursting. Bursting. Micah Richards style down the right hand side here. Cuts that back to Fevre. Here's Alex Scott. And room for Fabian on the edge of the box. Anthony steals it away from the defender. And Melier was scrambling to get across there. Is he given a pen or is he given a free kick for us? The way he pointed towards where the spot is and sprinted at it. Hello, Jaden Anthony. Made me think that he was given Bournemouth a penalty there for something. Jaden Anthony was on loan with us in season one in the championship. He's come back to Bournemouth now and he's headed back to the championship again. Wagner quickly into Archie Gray. Go to Wagner again. Somerville is there. And that's an easy ball through. Nice turn as well. And Somerville draws the save out to Neto. Maybe I should have looked for a near post pile driver. Went to try and place it in the far top corner. Didn't quite work. Ethan Ampadu's up. Oh dear. No. Oh, Fredericks is just gone. Well and truly gone. Needs to find a teammate though. Does so. Fair for a 1 0 Bournemouth. The already relegated side take the lead against the Europa League chasing side. Great. Root here. Back to Archie Gray. It's great movement. It's great movement. Whee! See what I did there. Peru. Brought it down really well. Couldn't finish. Fabian into Anthony. Sideways to Fabian again. That's a ping and a half. And Isunel brings it down. Uh-oh. Alex Scott could be a, a half-decent player to maybe look at signing Alex Scott with Bournemouth getting relegated. But for the time being, it's only 1-0. How we haven't scored, though, I'm not sure. Adams is on a run. He's on a hell of a run. He's Enes Unel. Don't even think about it, Enes. Wow. He thought about it and he wasn't too far wide with what he thought about doing and then followed through with doing it. Clover on for them now as they make a change to try and look for that second. I'm still looking for my first. I would need a second though. Um, can't do a thing today. Alex Scott quickly on to Justin Clover, who's turned well, finishes poorly. Half an hour to go. Still a goal down here at the Vitality. This is not how we saw our season with regards to the league finishing. Not sure how confident I'd be of beating Wolves in the FA Cup final at this rate. It is not going well for us here in this game. And this is the sort of calibre of opposition we should be just comfortably seeing off. It's classic FIFA, isn't it? That a side that are already relegated and have barely any points in the league season play against you. What is happening here? And they play like they're champions of Europe. Bournemouth have been unplayable for the majority of the game. Jack Clark will get that inside to Ampadu and we'll go to Jack Clark again. And please, can I please, can I please get a goal? Peru. Thank you. Now, can I please, can I please, can I please have one more? Ampadu steps in well. Peru picks up the loose ball. Drive across the defender. And then look to play in Jack Clark. Who will use Milan Van Evijk. He's going to look to get around the outside of this defender. And then square it. Looking for Peru. Maybe I should have gone one more to Gini Ruter. Arsenal have only just taken a 1-0 lead against Fulham. If they draw that game, then... If we can find a winner, we will finish sixth. But as it stands, we are staying seventh. And at the moment, via a league finish at least, it would be a Europa Conference League spot only for us next year. Do still have that European potential via the FA Cup final. That would be a Europa League position as far as I'm aware. But at the minute, that is going to be our only hope of European football at that level. Because... Via a league finish, we're not going to finish high enough. Wagner on the breakaway. Terrible ball looking for Crescencio Somerville. And with 10 minutes to go, it's still 1-1 here. And I don't believe Fulham stand a chance of equalising against the Arsenal. Do you? 
Bournemouth might stand a chance of taking the lead against us. They don't because the keeper made the save. Kirkes tackled by Van Evert. Still falls to Kirkes. Tackled again. Jack Clark on the breakaway. Come on, Jack. Fulham have equalised against Arsenal. And we've taken the lead in the 91st minute against Bournemouth. Jack Clark scored the extremely late goal against Liverpool to send us to the FA Cup final to give us the chance of Europa League football. He scored the goal late on here against Bournemouth to give us the chance of Europa League football via a league finish as well. Fulham equalised against Arsenal in the 84th minute through Timothy Castagna. We might, with that, have just finished in a Europa League spot. Not the last kick of the game. Bournemouth will have the chance to build again. It's not yet over. It is now, but we still don't know where we finished. I don't know what the West Ham score was either. If West Ham lost, then we might well be finishing fifth and definitely get Europa League football. West Ham have... Where are they? I couldn't see them. FA Cup final is the next one to come, but we finish sixth. West Ham were victorious on the final day. 67 points. What did they draw? They beat Fulham 1-0 there. They beat Wolves 4-1 there. On the final day, they were the late kickoff and they drew 1-1 with Brentford. That point away from home against Brentford is enough to see West Ham finish fifth and for us to finish sixth. Arsenal drew 1-1 with Fulham as well. So they stay seventh. It will be Europa League football for us next season. And in tomorrow's episode, as we have the FA Cup final and the full season roundup, we may well have the double whammy of Europa League football by winning the FA Cup final. And of course, the trophy that goes with it. Do drop the video a like. Do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss out on any of the videos by hitting the notification bell. And do join me tomorrow for that FA Cup final. I'll see you then.